Namo myoho renge kyo. Hi, friends. How are you doing? I hope you're in good health and safe, secure. So, I've been th thinking a lot lately. I know, don't be scared. <laughs> About, well, everything I'm doing here and everything I think about is about our practice, right? And so I was remembering, because I've been doing this for a while, it, was, it seems like we go through, well, this is samsaric life, right? These perceptions of cycles over and over again. Not necessarily the same thing, but the same kind of a process. Let me explain. I was thinking the other day, and actually I wrote my thoughts down and added them to a, a, a section of uh, the independent practice uh, book that I published some time ago. It used to be called Beyond Zen. Now it's called Independent Nitrin Doctrine of uh, Lotus Sutra Practice. There's a chapter at the very beginning of the book called Wuji to You and Me, or From Wuji to You and Me. And uh, I make a very quick kind of parsing through Western ideas, scientific ideas, Chinese, ancient Chinese ideas, uh, Taoism, yin yang, all of this stuff. I try to demonstrate that there's this constant thread that's not new, that we've always sensed as an empirical truth. I'm a bit of an empiricist, right? But uh, I wrote it a long time ago, and it was an attempt to answer a question that I never bothered to ask. And so I think that's what's been going through my head recently, especially with some of your questions out there about... You know, what really is this or that? Or we get accustomed to the rhetoric, the vernacular, the words, the, the words, language. It's such an impediment, right? Because Buddhism, and this is kind of cool, we should be thankful that it is, because recognizing that means that we actually experience and recognize that there's something far more profound than all these words. But that's good. That's what... Shakyamuni discovered, and that's what he was trying to teach for his lifetime, yeah? So what do we do when we're practicing and these questions come up that maybe at one time we got, we found an answer or we're told an answer or sometimes people just tell us, what's wrong with you? Why don't you get this, right? And so we just plunge forward. But, um, and usually you can read a Gosho or read a Sutra, some scholarship of Buddhism and you reintroduce yourself to, oh, yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah, I recommit, right? But that doesn't always work. There's always this nagging, not always, but there's sometimes this nagging, yeah, but. Hmm? This is the, the formation of doubt. And doubt, as we've read, Nietzschean tells us, Attack that stuff. Don't let doubt fester because it will become obstacle to your enlightenment, your very potential manifesting. This will stand in the way. So get rid of it. So I asked this very basic question of myself, really. What exactly is it that Buddhism endeavors to awaken? Awakening sounds great. Awakening is like waking up in the morning. Oh, everything's new and different or everything's awaiting my participation, my, my energy, my effort. But Buddhism is about the mind. And it's not about being asleep and awakening, although that analogy has been made. Gurdjieff made that analogy in the fourth way, Right? that most people are sleepwalking through life, just waiting for stuff to happen to them. That to truly be aware and awake in each moment of our existence is not what we actually are doing. 
That's kind of an awakening in itself, isn't it? All right. We catch ourselves. I'm just like plummeting through here. I'm not, I'm not really engaged in the happening moment to moment of what is going on. Self and environment, same thing, right? So I wrote all this down. And you, you can't, I can't, start to try to put words to this question and let alone answer it without running into all of the stuff. 3,000 realms, 10 worlds, uh, influence, karma. I mean, what are we enlightening? What are we awakening? And I thought, well, maybe it would be useful to back off the Buddhist rhetoric for a moment and think, you know, this, this practice is about such an apparent truth. Certainly, everyone is wrestling with it, Buddhist or not. So how do people who know nothing of Buddhism converse about this Problem, oh yeah, then I started to remember in the old days. You hear it all the time. It's, you know, why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep finding myself in this situation? The why questions, right? Why do I keep, why am I attracted to this kind of person or that kind of person? Why can't I get a job like this that I want? Or why is it every time I get a job I think I want, within weeks I find out, no, that's not what I want at all. What is it that going on in my head that I obviously don't have a clue about, right? Those kinds of questions. And the answers are even more unsatisfying because 99 times out of 100, and, and you can disagree with me in the comments, argue with me if you like, but 90 time, 99 times out of 100, when we really dig into these kinds of questions, we get to this uh, bromide answer, this band-aid. What's well, your unconscious mind doing that stuff? Your subconscious mind. Or one of my favorites, the lizard brain, right? Why can't I stop eating at night? Oh, that's your subconscious mind, or that's your lizard brain, or that's, you know, learned behavior, whatever. Lack of willpower, this wrestling match we've set up. Oh, and by the way, you know who's taking advantage of that popular thinking for millennia. Oh, that, you know, that's your relationship with God. <laughs> or some facsimile. I bring it up because, my goodness, the world is wrapped in that mysticism. It drives people to do the most insane things. If you don't believe me, look at what's going on in Israel and Palestine right now. Hmm? Or Pakistan. Sorry. Or the Middle East. Or the United States. Or Brazil. Or Africa. It seems like all the struggles in the world are based on these mentations, men, like taking sides. And ultimately, I mean, I know in America, it's popular to say it's all about oil. It's all about resources. Yeah, but it's funny. If you dig deep enough, even there, you will find that the leaders, the the puppet masters that are running that, you know, whether it's military industrial complex or the fossil fuel pharmaceutical industrial complex, oh yeah, they are driven by deep motivations for Armageddon, whatever label you want to put on it, for the cleansing of the world. As a Buddhist, that, that sounds so completely insane. I can't wrap my head around it, and yet there's evidence of it everywhere, right? How does that happen? People 
assuming control or saying they have control or saying they have answers for those unconscious, subconscious currents. Oh, will you swage your lizard brain? We know how to work with it, how to deal with it. Here's the answers you seek. And they're just, you know, rabbit out of a hat kind of things. So obviously, I mean, you've heard me talk around this many times. You know my how averse I am to all of that. But at the same time, I'm well aware that we're in pff, the fruition of that mental pablum everywhere in the world. And so for me, Buddhism isn't just an answer for how do I get my mind right? But the larger answer, the Buddhist answer, because my mind is my environment. If all of this crud is going on everywhere in the world, it's certainly in my brain, in my mind, right? In my karmic reality. Oh, now we're getting a little more fundamental, right? So certainly by, you know, hosing down some of that karma... I might clean more than just my driveway. I might actually do some street sweeping here. I might affect, influence more than just my little you know, personal experience of life. Well, that's, that's very appealing to me because it's very obvious that I don't live in my own head. I live although I spend a lot of time there, I live within the greater context of you and the world. And so if I'm to experience some peace, some awakening, then I have to see it mirrored in my environment. There is no choice. So maybe that subconsciousness, that unconsciousness, however many layers there are, whether you're Jungian or Freudian or whatever, maybe that is where awakening needs to happen. Maybe it shouldn't be subconscious. Maybe it shouldn't be unconscious. Maybe what we're awakening is that huge warehouse of goings-on that before Buddhism, we just sort of put in a basket over here and said, okay, that's driving. That's, that's what's pushing me through life. And when I put it in those terms, yuck. Yeah? Yeah. Well, that makes the idea of awakening a much more tangible thing for me, right? Right? Well, I'm saying right because I'm hoping you're kind of seeing what I'm talking about here. Now, the reason this is important, the reason I'm bringing it up, is because of many questions that I get. And it's this fundamental, really, uh, it's a, almost like a fulcrum. Once you cross that border... Once you cross that ideation of our practice from day to day, this is what I'm influencing, affecting, to, oh, what I'm affecting and influence is stuff that's going on all the time that I've never paid attention to or couldn't. And I'm influencing it with a pervasive all experiencing, getting under the sheets, application of clarity, demystifying. So the result should be, my life should be clearing up. Oh, I'm going to run into where that, that old underwear that I forgot all about was hiding this whole time. I'm going to run into it. Yuck. Because I'm clearing house, I'm awakening, I'm finding things. Karma. Hmm? 
It's not good or bad. It's just it's been hidden. Oh, that's what that been influencing this. And now that is an important moment in your understanding as well, because now you can't divorce yourself from your environment anymore. You can't see your environment as other. Once you cross that borderline and you see what it is you're awakening in your consciousnesses, it starts to become more and more obvious that those consciousnesses share, coexist with, penetrate you and the environment all at once. That the separation in our minds of self and environment is an illusion. Yeah, there's a physical apparatus here, but this apparatus is connected, feet to the ground, to everything else. We're not isolated little units. We're units just like photons of light, but when you see light coming from a star out in space, you don't see billions and countless of little points of light, do you? No, you just see boom, all of it. How ridiculous would it be for each photon of light to be going, me, it's me, look over here, it's just me. And then don't pay attention to the rest, it's just me, I'm the light. <laughs> Shut up, fool. <laughs> right? Because it is a quanta, an individual unit of the whole. It is energy. It doesn't even have mass. It's just energy. Hello, energy. And the only reason we have words like photon or quanta is because we're incessantly obsessed with measuring things. We don't experience light as photons. Hmm? Oh, but your eyeball does. Well, your eyeball is a construct to do this samsaric thing of identifying and database collecting. Go deeper. That's why in Buddhism, we don't talk about eyes. We talk about eye consciousness, the whole mechanism. Eye, nerves, brain, formation of ideas, mind. Mm, that's a different way to see. Right? So anyway, not to brush all of that aside, but just so you know, I put this, I made a document out of it, um, and I put it online so you can see how I build this argument, thought process, thought experiment. And I probably could write a whole book about it, but it's, I didn't want to go on and on and on and on. This has, oh gosh, it has 14 pages, so... That's plenty. <laughs> um, and I published it on threefoldlows.com on the core study materials page. Um, I recently put up a link there for, what the heck was it? Oh, yeah, the eight wins. And now that button has moved over and right next to it is Wuji to you and me. So uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on what I wrote down. If I made a bunch of typos... <laughs> I tend to be kind of stream of thinking. I write like I do these videos. I don't really script anything out. I have ideas. I might note down a few key words, things I want to include in my thoughts, and then I just go. So is that a form of an apology if it seems like it wanders? I don't know. But if there is information in it that seems unintelligible, or uh, 
or it sparks a thought of your own on this subject, man, I would really love to hear from you. In the comments, in my email. I mean, that's what the Sangha is for. Sharing our experiences, our thoughts, our, our deep mentations, yeah? To the benefit of all of us, practicing and getting rid of doubt. Getting doubt out of the way. It, it's, it's a sinkhole of energy. We don't need that. It's a black hole. Okay? But that's all I wanted to say. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting our Sangha. Liking, subscribing helps the algorithms push this source material out there for more people to find. So, For those of you who recently signed up, subscribed, whether you're longtime listeners or you just found us, thank you for being here. I encourage you to use, you know, there's a video I put up a while back. I should probably check it out again and make sure. Anyway, it's a, a sh basically a short video on the home page of this channel that gives you some clues as to how to use this resource, how to search it, how to find topics, as well as the other functions of this resource that are the static website at threefoldos.com, the various stores where you can get a, a proper mandala, so on and so forth, books, right? Ebooks on threefoldos and on Lulu, although, uh, yeah, anyway, or print books, whatever. Um, all of it in a sincere effort with those of you who are supporting the channel, not only with likes and subscriptions, but through buying the books, through Patreon, through PayPal. For all of us to grow this resource, to, f to get rid of doubt, to strengthen our practice, to create greater confidence, right? So that we can reach the pinnacle of our efforts in practicing Namu Myoho Renge Kyo. And for that, once again, I thank you. I uh, encourage you to be mindful of your health. Be kind. Be kind to yourself, which includes your health, and uh, to others. Why not? All right. Enjoy your life. I will see you in the next. Thank you for listening, and mostly for your practice, of course. Without that, we're done. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>